Hello guys, good evening. How are you guys? <laughs> okay guys, uh, I will walk through you and as I promise that uh, if you have seen, if you have watched my previous video, promise that I will be sharing uh, how we do in the front end in the Angular to connect to our Windows API or that need for 3.1 API. That is a Windows authentication type. So in our uh, client app, in our client offices, we are using Angular. We should get the Windows current username. Yeah, then of course, we it can allow us to access the endpoint from the Windows using the Windows credential. So there are lots of things that needs to configure but uh, i'm going to share it to you so you can have an idea too and if you are looking for something like this so this will be a good help as well so i've been doing this uh, first i will stack up yeah i did my research uh, found some helpful articles okay so the first thing that we need to do is in our when we create the that need for project yeah and the that need for project this one this is our that need for api project so this is created using windows authentication so we have to select windows authentication so if you can see in our land setting that json the windows authentication is true right and yeah uh, i have this 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 is I have tested it locally, so I have not tested it in the Windows Server, but later on I will test it. So I'm just testing it running IIS Express. So basically in your IIS Express, um, we need to, to configure, we need to take a look in the properties and then debug. Uh, yes, this one. And some setting here that you need to check. For example, is enable Windows authentication. So that's one important thing. Uh, after that, uh, our startup configure services, we need to force the Windows authentication and API. So we have added the code here in our services services is in a startup because this is that need for 3.1 so basically first thing that we have to add in our configure services of course there's one this is add course so it will allow you to configure your endpoint so it will be accessible from the other from the angular client so if you will not configure this it will be course uh, enable like that something error. Okay, so this is why I have built Obit origin configuration API URL. So I just put it in my app setting. Uh, yeah, this one. So this is my local host. It's running. So if you take a look, this is the this is the one. So as you can see, guys, I already. What's happening? yeah uh, because my service is not running so that's why there's an error okay so i should get my username here at the right side the right, right portion so but because our i just stopped this one so it's it's not uh, it's not displaying right so so basically uh on the api side in that network uh, the configuration are this are the following so to allow for course origins you just add your this one allow me to allow you there the, the important one is allow credential and that's the method called by runtime so after that guys uh, you need also to add the windows authentication for its http option request so the services add authentication so IIS default authentication scheme and then you configure your 
by the MDC conflict, the policy authorization builder required authenticated user like that. And then, of course, something like that. And then, of course, this is my DB connection. I just put it here. I configure it so. Uh, yeah. Then I am using unit of work. So I put here my configuration for unit of work. So, and my controller, I just inject there. So I also use AutoMapper. That's the way I configure the AutoMapper here. And in your configure services, I mean in the configure method, you have to add your course, use course like that. Okay, after it's being it's being uh, configured here in the startup that sees everything is okay now. So if we run this one, I mean when you go to the controller, I have here the user controller. So basically this user controller will just get the current uh, username we are using the STP context here. So this is just a live, I just put it in a helper. So we are accessing the user through the high principal. So this is uh, what security that principal name is. And then we can return the identity that name. All right, so when we run our API now, We can have our user endpoint here that's uh, basically display the current user. I put this in uh, Swagger so you can see it display now my current username, right? And then when we go to, to our Angular, basically, uh, first thing that we did is, of course, if you have not created an uh, Angular project from the start. I have a video there how to create a new project using Angular. And then, yeah, so I just created a common folder here. And then this is the class that uh, the Windows Authentication Interceptor. So basically, uh, we are going to intercept, uh, we are going to intercept from the Angular. Yeah, now that class is added to include the Windows authentication credential when making a HTTP request to the API. So basically, uh, we import uh, HTTP request if we handler HTTP interceptor HTTP event, and the observable is from RxJS library. And this 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 import is is coming from Angular Common HTTP. All right, so. And when you create this class, it's already by default this it force class and then just implement the HTTP interceptor. And then this is now, this will have this intercept and then uh, this is the variable of type HTTP request will be any. And then the next HTTP handler, observable HTTP event of type any, and then just clone. Uh, Windows credential pass through and then let's just return handle that this the strip variable. Alright, so that is our common uh, Windows authentication step, uh, interceptor class. So uh, in our environment uh, I already added here the API this URL which is system level loss four four three one if you can see here that is our API or it's running. This one, yeah, this is our API endpoint. Right, so from there, oh, next that we are going to do is we create the services. So we just can type in G and then space G and I space generate the case then the service of course you create the folder first and go to the folder and then of course the the service that we are creating is the user service here so basically we import the our environment to get the api address and also the http client so we have variable http and then to get the windows username from api 
this is the observable of string then we just return a certificate the url and this this is the api api that we i just displayed earlier and then the respond type takes so now in your app modules that is uh you need to import the http client module so at the first step i import http client but it's not working so you can see an error so instead i research i, I found in the stack overflow so instead of http client you have to import the http client module and also the http inset sector from the angular common http library all right so the provider this is a http inceptor and the use we have to use the class that we have created this one okay so we put it in our app modules and of course our bootstrap component is the default is app component which is this one so if you can see in our app html this is just the navigation bar and then here at the right side i access this windows current user so it will display here so this is with this variable is actually here in the app component that they is okay, so we have a variable here in this credential of type string and then on the constructor the user service we just get it that is why that windows current username is equal to the user okay so that's the basically uh the how it's being uh displayed to our html because this is coming from here in the typescript command up and then displayed it in our html which is windows current user but of course in our app module you have to as i said uh it's the big client module you have to import and then of course uh this provider you for that in the provider arrays array the provider is NTHP. this is a multi-provider token that represents a registered is http interceptor object so in the class then i think that's 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 the only thing so nothing here this is the this is the app component as well just keep the username put it in the variable and then we can access it from our same page like this um, yeah the other services is for for other yeah uh, basically this is just the start out uh, starting point so we'll get the current username from our windows login and it it's already in our client uh, front end which is using angular and after that we will create other services for example we can now add modify delete oh, any 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 further uh, business requirements that we will do all right so this is very important so i think uh, if you are in, in, uh, creating application and internet internet so you can use windows authentication but if you are not going to or for example if you are you uh, deploying up in the cloud so basically you, you don't use windows authentication you will use uh, for example uh, token based authentication where you need to uh, let your user register first uh, username and password but this one we are not going to ask the user username and password but th this is something like single is 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 oh, single uh what is automatic login that's is 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 oh, so that's, that's the term right so so yeah that's that's the important thing okay so basically uh in our our, our client in our back-in to start the startup that i'm talking about so this is the important one and i'm trying to do this also in that need seven that need six but it's I not in success yet because there is uh, I cannot configure there is there's a lot of I don't know yet but since our web server in our company is now in running that need three point one so I will just use three point one for now and later on I will have to try 
it again in running .NET 7 or .NET 6. So I stuck up there, so I just use this and yeah, hopefully if you know how you do it in .NET 7, .NET 6, uh, maybe you can comment on uh, available resources because I'm going to, I'm looking for it. So guys, uh, yeah, so we will, this is our, this is our Angular, so basically, uh, yeah, uh, we just display our current username here. So if you can see that, maybe uh, this long mirror here. So if I turn off, or if I will not include this one uh, first, so that's why I'm talking about. So for example, I misspelled it, or I will not put it here. So you can see that the arrow would be uh, first origin, something like that. So we will see in our client. Uh, maybe I can just put here. I will just, I will just change the setting. So instead of this one, I will just add zero and of course, that's not the main point. So basically, when we go to our this one, we will press this on our application. So you can see now this is the error. So uh, HTTP request has been blocked by course policy. Not this control allow origins not allowed. So that's what I'm talking about about the course. So you have to. It. So if you deploy it in your server, so you can just skip the URL. So that's it. Um, another thing, for example, in this credential, you know. Right, guys. So if you have not subscribed, subscribe now, and don't forget to help hit the bell button so you will be notified of our coming video and we'll be creating an angular application in .NET and connecting to .NET core 3.1 API and we are using .NET, uh, .NET angular 15 so uh, learning is so fun and of course there are less challenges but uh, you just have to take your time and study further there are lots of resources so thank you guys and happy learning